It's been my life. Throughout the century, since United Union of Roofers, Waterproofers, and Allied Workers Local No. 12 of New Haven was chartered on September 8, 1919, the dedication of its officers and member roofers and waterproofers to superior service and quality craftsmanship to its industry and its community have helped build and rebuild Southern Connecticut. It's your union and you got to fight for it and stick together and it, and it works out. Local 12 was formed in September 1919 after the Slate and Tile Roofers Union merged with the Composition Roofers. With that merger, Slate and Tile Roofers Union Local No. 6 of Bridgeport was reassigned as Local No. 12 with the United Union. Since that time, Local 12 has installed, replaced, and repaired the roofing on the most important structures and facilities within its jurisdiction, and most notably, the most iconic resident in the region, Yale University. I think the thing that's really helping out the most, to be honest with you, is Yale University. We get um, anything over a $10 million project, we've got a very, very good chance of getting what's under what's called a PLA, a Project Labor Agreement, which means it's all, all union. Over 100 years, the locals' union roofers have helped build and maintain the world-renowned school's many legendary and celebrated structures, most all of which have required the installation of old-style slate and hot tar roofing. It seemed like every other job we did was at Yale. And we've done jobs in Stanford, Greenwich. Somehow we always come back to Yale. A lot of slate work. Along the way, Local 12 has benefited from a wealth of good times, but has also endured and persevered through a multitude of hardships. During its infancy, the local began to roar along with the 1920s, during which the Local 12 membership enjoyed strong employment as many new buildings were constructed in the region throughout the decade. But the Great Depression of the 1930s took its toll on Local 12 as the historic economic and human catastrophe throttled the roofing industry and union roofers' employment. However, in 1931, the United Association chartered new composite and gravel roofing Local No. 107 in Bridgeport. But just five years later, it was merged into Local 12 on June 9, 1936 to form a single slate, tile, and composition roofers and waterproofers local to serve the region. World War II likewise had a profound impact on Local 12, a dozen of whose members served in the armed forces during the global conflict. Throughout the war, military production expanded within the many factories in Bridgeport, such as the General Electric plant, creating large amounts of work for Local 12. During the decade and a half after the war, employment remained plentiful throughout the 1950s. During that time, the local's contractors implemented new technologies on their jobs, such as felt laying machines. But the local's roofers more often than not applied roofing in the age-old manner, with hot jobs the norm as it would be throughout the 1960s. The new guys didn't know that much about swinging a mop, right? They were more, um, we had rubber crews and hot tar crews. In those days, you know, it was tough because everything was done by hand. You know, it isn't what it is today, you know, a burn down, a rubberized roof. Uh, the tar industry that we use, you know, the coal tar pitch, uh, the uh, asphalt, uh, dead level. There was three different kinds of hot tar that we used in those days. And the toughest one was the coal tar pitch. At its inception in 1919, and over the next eight plus decades, Local 12 trained its apprentices to become journeyman roofers and waterproofers almost exclusively through hands-on, on-the-job apprenticeships while working at job sites alongside experienced journeymen. Actually, we didn't have an apprenticeship program at the time. You learned everything on the roof. You were the dog. <laughs> All the way into the 1990s, Local 12 still had no formal apprenticeship program in place. Training consisted of very little classroom or laboratory education, as apprentices continued to learn primarily while on the job. When I first started, there was no overhead hoist, and everything was done with rope and wheel. 
Roofing systems for low-slope roofs changed dramatically in the late 1960s and 1970s, during which time cold process systems, torch applied modified bitumen, and many other methods were introduced to the roofing industry to replace hot applied built up roofing. With all the new equipment and everything, it's so much easier to roof than when we did. You know, we used to break our backs. Work remained abundant for Local 12 into the 1960s, and by 1962, its members were earning a per hour contribution from contractors into a health and welfare fund. But Local 12 had to wage three separate strikes during the decade to gain additional wage increases and improved conditions. Perhaps most significantly, the contract won in June 1969 included a 30 cent per hour contribution to a new pension plan fund. Meanwhile, the Local's members were enjoying unprecedented employment throughout its jurisdiction as New Haven experienced a boom in construction. During the 1970s and 1980s, Local 12 members and their contractors handled upwards of 85% of the roofing jobs in its jurisdiction. Members were even working outside Southern Connecticut, in locations such as New York City, Boston, and Hartford, as their contractors won work in those cities. During that time, single-ply roofing and other roofing systems began to drastically change the roofing industry. The second half of the 1970s also saw the introduction of inverted roof membrane assemblies. Basically, first, everything that we did at that time, from like from the 60s to maybe 80s, we started to get a little more mechanized. For a start, everything was pulled up by hand hot tar, the rolls of paper, the gravel, and a little automation. We got a little machine that we filled up a box about this big, gravel, and had a little machine on the ground, hoisted it up, wheelbarrow full. Healthy work and wages for Local 12 members continued into the 1990s. We had a bad. We, I lost a lot of money. The balance of the 1990s and Local 12 were severely marred when it was discovered that the local's pension fund manager stole more than $2.8 million from the fund over a period of 10 years from 1981 to 1991, draining the fund of more than half its assets. The damage from the losses for the local's members would not be repaired for years to come. In the end, a very minor amount of money was recovered for the local compared to the funds that were stolen. The members were right there eager to, to help, uh, you know, get things back on track. Afterwards, the local switched its pension to the union's National Roofing Industry Pension Plan. So it's, you know, it's something that uh, I, I'm proud of that, you know, the members I represent today are going to get a pension benefit. Realizing the locals' apprentice training had to move forward in order for the locals' workforce to remain at the top of the roofing industry, in 2001, the local had hired its first apprentice coordinator, retiree Lou Kaminsky, to oversee it. Well, it gave us opportunity that we could supply, supply men to our contractors that needed men. The Local 12 Apprenticeship Program quickly developed and now provides class and lab instruction on two Saturdays each month during the winter and spring in a dedicated space at the Locals Union Hall. The training not only focuses on roofing theory, applications and techniques, but also on safety. When you first started, I had a monitor with, a, with an overhead, you know, with the, all that stuff. But now. Well, we, we've gotten through the smart board and projectors. With the industry's heightened emphasis on safety, the locals' training has responded in kind with a renewed stress on occupational safety and health administration training regulations. A lot of these guys are learning now that before you even get on a job, safety starts first. 
Work remains steady throughout the new Y2K millennium and to the local's 100th anniversary in 2019, bolstered by a large market share of the larger roofing jobs in the local's jurisdiction, which included the 31-story 360 State Street, the second tallest apartment building in Connecticut in 2010, and ongoing work at Yale under an increasing number of union-friendly project labor agreements. Members are also benefiting more than ever from strong health insurance and pension retirement subsidies through the locals' collectively bargained agreements. When you get your pension statements, you know, it's, it means the world. Leading up to its 100th anniversary, Local 12 consistently grew as it continued to push organizing, bringing younger workers into the local, and surpassing 300 members in December 2018, up from just 80 in the mid-1990s. At 100, the local's growth and reputation are additional testaments to the commitment of its officers and members, which will sustain the United Union of Roofers, Waterproofers, and Allied Workers Local 12 during its next century of service to Southern Connecticut, its contractors, and its membership. You couldn't ask for a better group of guys, believe it. You couldn't wait to come to work the next final day because you worked, but you had fun, but you worked. You could make a good living. You could have a better life. For me, I, man, I raised my my kids being a roofer. You know, um, again, they, they're they're family. This this is my family. This you know, this is my second house.